if you got people if you're trying to buy a pup from a breeder and they constantly putting down other breeders y'all pay attention to that pay attention to the fact that they talking bad about these other breeders and then you start grilling them start asking them questions like since you down in this breeder so bad what you got what you got going on like what's how good is your program let me see your your yard since you're talking this much junk about somebody and what they doing with their dogs let me see what you got like ask them questions especially if they putting down other breeders y'all if they put down other breeders talk shit about other breeders and what they dogs look like and what they what they doing with they program and shit they worry too much about somebody else instead of worrying about they self stop it's probably best not to buy a dog from that that breeder i'm not even lying if all they do is talk about other breeders and how bad that breeder is doing you should be questioning if you should be buying from that breeder i think it is going to rain today y'all i hope i don't get caught in that shit because i don't got no shirt on no sweater on no umbrella No, come. She bad. <laughs> she bad. Come on, mamas. Really? So I jump up at my camera like that? Pink Lily, stop jumping on my back. You ain't no pit bull. Think she can just jump on my back like that. I don't even know if I got it. I don't even know how I'll be recording her though. I just put my GoPro down and pray that I'm getting a dog hooked while I'm walking. <laughs> don't go in the road. I'll put you on the leash. Come here. I think you need to be on the leash. Come here. You're doing too much right now. These trainer videos is coming y'all. If I want to keep her, I gotta do better with the leashes. She know off the off trainer. She won't run away and stuff, so we about to focus on leash trainer. I'm just walking to get me some coffee, y'all. And normally, morning walks, I don't feed her. Because um, I want her to have an empty stomach. I don't want to risk her overheating or... I don't know what it's called, but... Your dog's stomach can flip. If you feed them and then have them outside playing and going on long walks, it can literally flip <laughs> with the food in there and it, it, it could cause your dog to die. So that's why I, when I go on long walks, I don't feed them before I go on them long walks or I at least wait at least two hours before I go on the walk if I do feed them before I walk.
because I ain't spending five to ten grand to do a surgery to get some to unknot my dog's stomach. It literally knots up because you want to be out here playing with your dog while they got a full belly. That's not a good combination. Pink Lily. Look there. Like I say in my videos, I don't train them. I just allow them to learn what I, what I want them to learn as they do what I want them to do. But I'm about to really train her. <laughs> Treats and all, y'all. Treats and all. Because she need to be taught some shit. <laughs> I thought they was open this whole time, y'all. They wasn't. Yo! What's up? What you have to scare for? No, let's go. Remember y'all, don't acknowledge the fear. Don't pet the dog when they scared of shit. Right now she hear the lawnmowers and shit going off and she's scared of it. Don't say, oh, poor baby, none of that. Just keep going. Thank you. <laughs> I should have been recording her instead of my dirty nose self. and baby mom I ain't recording her out of respect not other any no other reason out of respect everybody doing construction and working everything everywhere I turn come on right walk like a dog like you got meaning ain't supposed to be scared of shit. You scared or no? You scared? Look at that confident level. It's cause I don't praise her when she's scared. I may be like, yo, what you scared of? <laughs> but I won't pet her. I won't praise her. Any kind of thing that's gonna make it seem like it's a good thing that she's afraid. See, if I go down the hill, I'm going to have to pump the hill. And I don't want to have to do that, but I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> that loud noise, like I said, she's afraid of loud noise, y'all. So I don't want to overwhelm her. Because then I'm going to have to pick her up because she ain't going to want to walk. And in my opinion, that's a form of praising her that she's afraid. And I'd rather go a different direction than have to even do that that's gonna set me back with her <laughs> no huh. 
a guy that I knew used to live over here, right? And he used to breed dogs. And he used to clown everybody dogs. <laughs> Come on. He used to clown everybody dogs, but he had the most wackest dogs ever. <laughs> yeah, the wackest dogs ever. He used to clown everybody about their dogs. So when he came, he he came to me one day and he seen that I had uh, some dogs that I was breeding, like my girl Diggity Dot. That's who he he came to see, and he was like, "I got the smallest dog out here in the burg." I brought my girl Diggity Dot out. She was way smaller than his girl. So he snapped a picture of her and shit. And he's the type that like to gossip. He like he like to talk about people dogs and shit. But <laughs> it's like, yo, like, what's the point of trying to bring people down, yo? Cause your shit whack. <laughs> I had got a dog off of him, right? His whole litter was born sick. But me, I, would, I wasn't even breeding at that time. I just wanted a dog. So he sold me one of his female dogs without papers for cheap as fuck. And when I got her, I noticed that her vagina era was slightly swollen. More swollen than it should be. And she was only a pup, so it was definitely not time for her to come into heat. But not knowing what about dogs the way that I should have been knowing. I didn't know that it was some form of a disease that she was going through. So I took her to the vet when I first got her, got her first rounds of shots and stuff. And they said, she's good, she's in the clear. So I ain't think nothing about it. I had her for a year. He came by to see her. He was like, oh yeah, she nice. She filling out nice and shit. I'm like, yeah, I'm feeding her. <laughs> Why else wouldn't she fill out nice? This is before I started breeding, y'all. So, um, we talking, right? And he talking about, stop. He talking about the blood he has and everything and what he trying to do with that blood and what other blood he trying to mix with it and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there listening and just soaking it all in, you know? Because... When he sold me the dog, first when he sold me the dog, he was like, I don't have the papers now, but I can get the papers. I'm like, bet, okay. That'll give me enough time to save up and I'll pay you the remaining fee for the paperwork. So a year goes by and uh, he comes over, he started talking about blood and different dogs and shit like that. And then he all of a sudden tell me that Two of, the do two of the puppies from the litter had passed away. I'm like, what? <laughs> he said, yeah, when I sold them, he said, two of them had passed away. Thinking that he sold them to bad owners, they must have didn't care for the dog or some shit. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> my dog not gonna die because she in good health. I ain't just gonna let her die. <laughs> anyway. Another year go down the line, so the dog is two years old. I hit him up. I've been hit him up for the paperwork, but I'm like, she's still a pup. I ain't sweating it right now. So when she hit two years old, I was like, all right, I want to at least try to breed her. I had a male. He had papers. I was like, yo, I need the paperwork for her. I been had the money. Like I was stacked up on the money. He was like, yeah, I sent you the numbers to her paperwork. Um, it was your responsibility to get the papers. I'm like, cause you know, all those got their own personal number on the papers. It's like a social security uh, number for humans and shit. <laughs> if you want to compare it to something. So I was like, what? I ain't never get no numbers, me. Being new at it, I didn't know nothing about numbers, papers, bloodline. I know about bloodline, but not nearly as much as I know now. So when he said he had, had texted me the numbers, I'm like, how the fuck you text me numbers? 
I don't remember getting no numbers. <laughs> so, like, you just go by and I get my first dog. I got my girl Zena. And I got her paperwork. Hold on, y'all. So, I got my girl Zena's paperwork. I'm like, yo, numbers. What, what numbers are you talking about? And I look on the papers, and dogs got their own little social number, like. So I'm like, this dude ain't give me no papers. He just gave me a number. And I don't even remember getting a number. So I was asked out. I had a female dog with no papers. Because I didn't know what the fuck he was talking about when he said he gave me the number to for the papers. And I should have just sent them, sent it in or something like that over the internet i didn't know what the fuck he was talking about <laughs> so i was like whatever i just got a pet i ended up giving a dog to my aunt i'm gonna come back with the story i gotta run to the store oh uh, yeah <laughs> All I watch is people videos on YouTube, blogging, yeah. they the best. <laughs> it's more entertaining than something that's rehearsing. Right, it is more entertaining. I'm just scared to do it. You on YouTube? Uh-huh. What's your name? Uh, Ebony Vlogs. Ebony Vlogs? Yeah, it's All a right. picture of me. You'll be able to see it. All right, <laughs> I'm about to go search you now. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Mike. I'll see you tomorrow. Coffee, uh, I got her off the leash, so we're gonna see how uh, how good she do while walking back to the house. But anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, I gave the dog to my aunt for a pet for her son, and she had the dog for a year, maybe two. And then she had to move, so she couldn't keep the dog. Pink Lily, come. She couldn't keep the dog, so I ended up giving a dog to a, a, a lady. I just gave her the dog for free. She had she owned her own house and everything. Thank you, thank you. Pink Lily. Pink. Them dogs sound like they fighting each other. Them dogs sound like they going at each other. Anyway, I gave the dog for free to a lady. I couldn't keep the dog because I moved also. And then my aunt moved, and she couldn't keep the dog. So I was like, I'm going to just find her a home. I gave her to, for free to a lady. Had her own house. She had a big-ass backyard. Like, her backyard was huge. It was almost the same size as this playground. So I was like, yeah, she's going to be living a life over here. She started training the dog and everything. But all of a sudden, the dog started throwing up. She contacted me. She was like, she keep throwing up. She won't stop throwing up. I was like, what? She ain't never threw up like that before. Ah, 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 ah. What are you doing? Come on. I was like, she ain't never throw up like that before. So, uh, she took the dog to the vet. She hit me up. Actually, no, she didn't. She didn't hit me up. I waited a few months. Then I hit her up because I, I wanted to like do an update see how the dog was doing and uh she told me she was like i didn't know how to tell you this but i had to put the dog down and i'm like what why, why the fuck would you put the dog down and she was like the vet told me that she was sick she had some kind of disease that they couldn't cure and she said she did some research on this disease i forget the name of it but it's when it, it happens to females and it's when the vagina area is like infected and they're they're born that way i don't know 
Hello. Or it's either the vagina area or a disease a female get as a puppy and as the time goes by it affects the whole body and that's why she kept throwing up and throwing up and um i think she said she was urinating a lot and i was like uh there was nothing they could do she said there was nothing they can do i would have saved her if there was something they could do she said it spread throughout her whole body and um she had to just put the dog down and take a loss she says she didn't know how to tell me since i was the one i gave her the dog but, uh-uh, Pink, come. Good girl. <laughs> um, but since I was the one that gave her the dog, she felt scared to hit me up and tell me that she had to put the dog down. And I was like, she did the right thing. Like, she said, first let me jump back. She said that there was nothing she could do. And it was possible that either the puppy was born with this disease that she had or she contracted it at a very young age, like newborn age, like before I even got her. So back backtrack to where I said when I got the puppy, her vagina area was always swollen as if she was in heat all the time. Like, it never went down. And when she did come into heat, it swelled up really bad. Like, real bad. So I was like, dang, she she ready to breathe. And by the time she was two, I was ready. By the time she was two, I was ready to breed her. But he flaked out on the papers. I don't know what he was talking about, about, about numbers. And I had to send the numbers in. I don't know if people do it like that or what. But I, I don't do it like that. I send a paper in and get the full, uh, the permanent paperwork. So I don't, I don't know what he was talking about when he said numbers and he sent me in numbers and I never got any numbers from him. So I was like, that's whatever. The dog stayed as a pet. She stayed with my aunt for as a pet. When my aunt couldn't keep her, I gave her to the lady. The lady took her to the vet and found out that the dog always been sick. She's always been sick. That That's why she always had the swollen area ask me what this disease was I wouldn't be able to tell you no the lady did not just put the dog down she did have one of my other dogs that's why I felt so comfortable with giving her this female because she took very good care of the male dog I had gave her so I felt extra um, comfortable with giving her this female I had and if I still have a picture of the dog I'll I'm gonna insert it in this video um, but her name was, uh, what was her name? Bella. Her name was Bella. And she was a rambunctious pocket bully. Rambunctious. And when she told me she, uh, put her to sleep and she didn't know how to tell me, I was like, uh, I had gave her to you. So she was basically your dog. It's good. You did what you felt was best, you know? And if the dog was suffering, it was best to put her down. Where are you traveling to? Huh? When a year went by when I had this dog and he told me that two of his other dogs had passed away when he sold them. He was like, two of the other dogs had passed away or something to that point effect. And he was like, you got the only surviving dog and I wanted to come check on her. I was In my head, I'm like, of course she's surviving. We feeding her, she walk, getting, going for walks and shit. Not knowing that the possibility of the other dogs dying because they also had a disease, also whatever this disease was. So I'm assuming that the whole litter contracted some kind of disease. And as the years went on, or as time went by, it just um, spread throughout the whole body. And so she survived the most because I was taking good care of her. My aunt was taking good care of her. She was eating really good. She was going on her walks and everything. She had her own little room and everything. But when we had to move, we had to give her away. The lady took her uh, to the vet and she was like, she had some kind of disease. They just didn't have a cure for it. So uh, that's the end of that. All in all, I started this story to say that he was clowning a whole lot of people about their dogs and what their dogs look like and 
the bloodline behind all they dogs, but you was uh, having sick litters and shit. <laughs> the whole litter came out sick for my assumption. Allegedly, they all came out sick and he came by and told me that the, the whole litter had died except for my girl. Come to find out they all had the, what I'm assuming is a disease that they all contracted when they was babies. So they, the other puppies probably died on early because they wasn't being properly cared for. But since I was properly caring for the dog that he gave me, that he sold me, uh, she survived a whole lot longer than his, the rest of the, the litter. So uh, with that being said, be careful who you buying dogs from. If somebody clowning other people about their dogs, don't buy from them. They probably the ones that's not even taking care of their dogs, to tell you the truth. But at the time, again, I wasn't a breeder. I wanted a dog. He told me I can get the papers when he was flaking out about the papers and shit. I didn't really sweat it because at the time I wasn't um, breeding. So I didn't give a fuck about the papers. I gave a fuck, but didn't give a fuck at the same time. Like, she was my, going to be my first dog with paperwork. So I didn't know much about it. I only started studying it after I had got my first dog with papers. And, um, yeah, that, that shit it went downhill. And to this day, when I see him, I think about that dog all the time. Like, you sold everybody puppies that were sick, and you made them think that it was their fault that these dogs had died. When all, of, all along, these dogs could have contracted a disease, and you didn't properly care for them. So her vagina area stays swollen, y'all. It stays swollen. And when she came into heat, that shit swelled up 10 times more. And it was one time I tried to breed her to a, a, a woman who had a micro male. And he was fired. So I was like, yeah, I need puppies off of her. I just wanted puppies, y'all, to tell you the truth. And we was trying to breed, and she was... At her last days and everything, she started flagging and stuff for us. So I was like, yeah, she ready. And the person that I was breeding to with this, the stud, they knew more about dogs than I did. So they was like, yeah, she's ready. She went and got her stud. And we was going to do an AI. I didn't know nothing about AIs at this time. But she knew about, uh, the person who had the male knew about AIs. So we tried to do a natural uh, breeding at first. We put them in the yard together. He started mounting her. Before we even put the male with her, she was flagging. So that's when we decided, yeah, she's ready. But when we got the male, she wouldn't let him mount. She was like in distress. It's, it was like she was in pain. Like, But I'm not thinking, I didn't catch on to that shit. But it was like she was in pain. She didn't want him penetrating her, it was like, like painful or some shit but she was in heat she was flagging but she, when he almost would penetrate her she would like snap at him and shit and then I start I put two and two together after the, I hit the woman up and she told me she put the dog down and I was like yeah, maybe that's why she wouldn't even let nobody touch her vagina area because she was so sensitive back there or something yeah, I don't know what this disease was. She she told me the name of the disease. But it's been so many years. I can't remember this the name of this disease. But she said, it's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's something that the puppy contracted when they was real, like, young, young. And I don't know if the puppy was born with it or they just contracted it after they were born. But I had that dog. She was like three maybe four when I gave her to the woman so she survived three four years with me and with my aunt and then when I gave her to the woman she had her for a few like two months before she took her to the vet and then like three months after that I hit her up and um I asked her like how's the dog doing is she adapting to you well like questions and she said, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but I had to put the dog down because um, she had some form of a disease and they couldn't do nothing about it. So 
I did Google the disease. I did look it up. It, it's legit what she told me, but I can't remember the, the name of it, y'all. I can't. Stop it. Um, but apparently it's something that female dolls get. Um, and it, it affects the, like, the body. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know how she explained it, but it's something that female dolls get. And none of the female dogs that uh, was birthed in that litter survived. The dog that I had was the only one that survived. The dogs made it past eight weeks. Like, he sold the dogs and everything to new homes and everything. And he told me that the, the whole litter had died, like, months after he sold them. He sold them and gave them homes. And the people that he sold the dogs to hit him up and told him that they passed away. And that's when he came and checked on the dog I had. And um, he told me the story about the whole litter passing away. And he wanted to come check on um, Bella, the female I had. Stop it. And I was like, yeah, she good over here. Like, not knowing that she did have some form of a disease that was spreading throughout her body. And again, I only took her to the vet as a puppy. I didn't go back and forth and all of that to the vet um but she had it before i even purchased her from him she had it so there was nothing i could have done now if i would have um ran some blood tests on her like the other lady did i would have found out that she had it but i probably would have been too stubborn enough to pick the dog down so it was probably best that she did it because i wouldn't have did it i wouldn't have been able to pick the dog down Stop it. But I was, a, I can't lie, I was a little upset that she did, but I had to realize that the dog probably was suffering. She probably wouldn't be able to um, afford treatment if there was treatment. She told me there wasn't no treatment. Like, it was too far gone, whatever this disease was. And it wasn't cancer. <laughs> like, this dog was thriving. This dog was running around, playing, eating. It wasn't that. It was something that females contract. And I don't know. I don't know y'all. Some good coffee. I haven't had coffee in two days. I was like, I gotta go get me some coffee. Yeah, but all in all, if you got people, if you're trying to buy a pup from a breeder and they constantly putting down other breeders, y'all, Pay attention to that. Pay attention to the fact that they talking bad about these other breeders. And then you start grilling them. Start asking them questions. Like, since you down in this breeder so bad, what you got what you got going on? Like, what's how good is your program? Let me see your your yard. Since you're talking this much junk about somebody and what they doing with their dogs, let me see what you got. Like, ask them questions. Especially if they putting down other breeders, y'all. If they put down other breeders, talk shit about other breeders and what they dogs look like and what they, what they doing with they program and shit. They worry too much about somebody else instead of worrying about they self. Stop. It's probably best not to buy a dog from that, that breeder. I'm not even lying. If all they do is talk about other breeders and how bad that breeder is doing, you should be questioning if you should be buying from that breeder. Because if you, they got the nerve to talk about somebody else, obviously something is wrong with their program. But again, like I keep saying, I wasn't breathing at the time. And I wasn't catching on to what he was really saying. like, Or what he, what what was what. Because like, before he even had the letter, I knew him. And he used to down talk everybody's program and everybody's dog. And I used to listen in on him like... I never really questioned, like, yo, if this dude is talking this much shit about this guy and that guy and this person and that person, then they program must really be shit. I never, it never clicked in my head, but now being a breeder, it's like, if you're talking that much shit about somebody, you got to have the suckiest program in the world. Now, that's just a story I wanted to bring up to y'all, because... You have to be careful who you buy buying dogs from, especially if you want to be a breeder. If you want to be a breeder, you got to make sure you get top-notch. Don't just buy any dog and think you're going to have the best. 
if you just want to pet okay but if you not even if you just want to pet you still got to look into it and do a little bit of research but if you got going to a breeder and they talking cash shit about somebody else's program that's a red flag that's what i'm trying to say that's a red flag